All right, so while the realistic down here and the series up there are going to get their own videos, I'm going to combine these three all into one because really, if I made all of these separate, there'd be three, probably two or three minute long videos because there's not that much that's all too terribly interesting with any of these three. But I figure it's better to make one, I don't know, maybe six minute long video about three clocks than it is to make three two minute long videos about these clocks. All right, so we're gonna start here. I don't know which one to start with, so let's let's pick one. How about this one, the Cosmo? It's really nothing fancy. I believe Cosmo is a Walmart brand. If it wasn't then, it certainly is now. Model number E701. Manufacturer was Cosmo Time Hong Kong. So it wasn't even made in China. This was back before Walmart made stuff, everything in China. Probably, you know, it was probably still very cheap. It looks very cheap. Feels very cheap. It's not like it's high quality material of any, any stretch of the imagination, but you can't beat the fact that it still actually works. And, well, for the most part, we'll see in a minute, or I'll tell you, actually, the I can't seem to get the alarm to work. I don't know why that is, but I'm willing to bet it's because this switch back here is dirty. And it is dirty. I can change it to all of its positions, but sometimes it'll jump, or it'll sit between positions, and it's it's just kind of, kind of weird, kind of funky like that. Um, they call them snooze button drowse, which is the first time I think I've ever seen it called drowse. I've seen it called a number of things, but never drowse. And when you push this, you can also set the alarm using the fast and slow button. The slow button's kind of messed up, but it's there, and does seem to at least kind of work. The fast button works all the time. Uh, what else can I think of to say? It's got a dimmer control, but I haven't seemed to be able to get it to do much, so let's plug it in. Right away, you'll see the first problem. It's actually missing a segment. But if I push on it hard enough, the segment comes back. So it's very clearly got broken solder joint or a temperamental... Well, okay, you get the idea. So let's set it. It's about 8.48 p.m. right now. So we'll go through the fast setting here. Now you can see the slow button doesn't quite work the way that you'd expect. All right, so it's 8.49. And I want to show you the special feature. You see on the back, there's a switch. It says alarm on, alarm off, and seconds. But what does the second switch do? It shows you the seconds that have passed. I'm assuming since you set it, I'm not quite sure, because it seems to, this digit actually seems to do something over here. And I think there's a there's a little, little broken solder joint in here somewhere, but anyways. So that's pretty cool. I haven't been able to get the alarm to work. There you can see some of the dirty switchness. I'd imagine that maybe a shot of contact cleaner or even some love, like switching it back and forth several times, will actually make it work. But other than that, that's pretty much it for this particular clock. The next one is, once again, not all too interesting. It's a Spartus clock radio with battery reserve. It takes a 9-volt battery. Uh, the Cosmo doesn't take anything at all. There's no battery backup. They call it Snooze-er, <laughs> which is kind of funny. There are your time-setting buttons, time and alarm, and your on-off switch for the alarm, which I think is also a little bit dirty, but all the switches on this one are dirty. And believe it or not, there is not a single... I'd imagine there used to be one here, but that was probably a quality assurance sticker and nothing else. And maybe there was also one here, but the stickers are long gone, so there's no information about this whatsoever. It's just a Spartus clock radio. I'm not sure who made it or anything like that, but I had a similar one that was made by West Clocks way back in the early to mid-2000s, and eventually that clock just basically lost all of the plot it actually stopped counting one day, so that was that was the day that it disappeared. So There's something loose inside of it, which I don't really like too much. Let's go ahead and plug it in and take a look. It's another one of those red LED clocks that, you know, is not all too terribly fancy. Nice and bright, though. 
I'm tempted to put this one out in the hallway and replace that pulser that's out there. I'm not quite sure yet, uh, because the pulser doesn't really hold much of an appeal to me. It seems far too modern. I mean, it's a nice clock, but it's it's modern, so... I'm going to go ahead and set the hour on this. It is 8, 8 p.m. And there we can see some of the dirty switchness. Fifty-two. Yeah, there's more of the dirty switchness. You can see, definitely got dirty switches. Very dirty switches. I'm probably gonna overshoot the time because of the dirty switches. Okay, Eight fifty-two. Let's set the alarm for. Oh, I don't know. Eight fifty-four. I don't know why I'm setting it, because I'm just going to end up unplugging it again in a minute anyways. Yeah, this is not really all that easy with the dirty switches. I'm going to turn the alarm on. It doesn't actually seem to have a, a light for the alarm. The alarm was working, I know that. Oh yeah, it's dirty switch. Maybe it's just a failing light. But there you can hear it. It's not all that loud. But I think that the reason it's not all that loud is because the beeper is being covered up by the price sticker. I'm not quite sure on that one. But I think we get the point. Next, which is funny because it's next tech. <laughs> oh, that was horrible. Ugh. This cheap silver, which really looks out of place when you compare it to the other two, which are wood grain vintage. Wow. It's, still, it's not even in bad shape either. Usually these painted silver plastic clocks look like crap after a few years because it's painted silver. So it's the paint's going to rub off and it's going to look horrible. But it's just your basic clock radio. There's not much to it at all, really. Uh, what's the model on this? It says 0.6 inch blue LED alarm cluck. Lovely. Take, it does have 9 volt battery backup, but all modern clocks really have that. And obviously manufactured in China. I don't know who made it. It doesn't really matter. It is recommended to use alkaline Recommended to use alkaline battery for battery backup and change the battery every year or after a power outage of more than 12 hours. Which is good advice. It's too bad nobody ever does that. And that's why you have all of these electronics around all over the place that, uh, well, they have seen better days. Let me tell you that much. I think this is the cord that I want. It's rather modern looking. That's what the cord looks like. Yep, that's the one. And holy shiznit, is that ever bright? Yes, that's bright. I would not want to use this as a main alarm clock because, oh, yeah, I would not be able to sleep with that. <laughs> Let's see here. The beeper's on the bottom, but uh, we'll go ahead and set it because why not, right? Oh, it's doing funky things on the camera. Well, that's interesting. I don't think I've seen that happen before with LEDs. I'll turn the alarm on. It'll probably go off in like two seconds. Yeah, so just a standard boring tone, but it's much louder than the Spartus is. Press the snooze button, we can turn it off, and that will do it pretty much for the video. So, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.